Hello everyone, welcome to another Artist Loft Drawing 101 class. Um, I'm your instructor, Adrian Hodge, uh, and happy to have you with me today. We're going to be working on this uh, mixed media feather triptych uh, mixed media drawing. This will be using a variety of materials. This is part one of two. Uh, and yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll switch to my desktop view here and turn off that message. Okay, so these are the feathers that we're going to be drawing. And I've got two out of the three. And then the third one, I've got the printout, just like you should have in the supply list. I had the reference photos, um, feather one, two, and three. So we'll be using those uh, in tonight's class. We will probably just get our our feathers sketched out on paper and begin practicing adding the color with the uh, water soluble wax pastels. Um, but before I go over all of the the rest of the supplies, I uh, just want to remind you to tag your work with the hashtags make it with Michaels or Michaels classes and follow me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge art. And then here's some of my business cards with some of my artwork on it and other places you can find me online like Facebook. Okay, so the supplies uh, for the class were the uh, watercolor pad the six by nine inch artist loft watercolor pad we had the uh, sketching pencils uh, you're going to want a synthetic eraser which i think comes in that, that set of pencils um, and then the artist loft illustration pens and you'll want a water cup paper towel and the uh, artist loft watercolor paint brushes and then these were the water soluble wax pastels not to be confused with the uh, oil pastels um, if you have never used these water soluble wax pastels before you're in for a treat um, because they are really cool and fun and I really enjoyed experimenting with them. And the benefits of coming to a class like this is I've done all of the heavy lifting for you in that I spent several hours wrestling with these uh, water soluble oil pastels to see, you know, what was the optimal thing that I could achieve with them and uh, had a lot of trial and error and figured out, you know, again and again that they are not oil pastels. <laughs> I kept wanting to treat them like oil pastels and just coming up short with uh, what I was making with them. And then finally, um, and maybe I should have brought some of my not so amazing examples. Um, with me to show you guys how how much I struggled with them, but then I finally figured it out and they're really fun and um, yeah so uh, we're but yeah tonight we are just going to draw these feathers and then uh, about 20 minutes until the end of class, we will focus on. Uh, experimenting with the wax pastels and, and doing kind of a test palette with them on a spare sheet of our watercolor paper. So um, that way we'll really have a handle on what we're doing with them. And then next week we can, you know, take our time um, adding the color. Or so we do have, Amy would like to know where you, where you bought those feathers, where you can buy those feathers. Oh, where did I buy the feathers? Mm -hmm. um, I guess I did actually buy these feathers. I have a whole bag of them somewhere and I just could not for the life of me find the actual feather um, or even the bag with all of them, but I got them on Amazon, um, those feathers, like a package of them. But uh, these two I found in the wild. Um, my daughter and, and my son went on a excursion with their grandparents to like a, a wild animal park, I think, and yeah, brought back 
um, the peacock feather and I'm not exactly sure what kind of feather this is, but they brought that back. I know it's gorgeous, um, but you have my reference photos and yeah, so hopefully, and yeah, with this one, we're, we're all going to be looking at the reference photos since I couldn't find the, the actual feather itself. Um, okay, but yeah, tonight we're just going to work on mapping out and drawing the feathers and we'll see how far we get. It may be um, that we end up doing all of the, the color palette and, and mixing and adding next week, but we'll see how far we get. Okay, so um, we're just going to get started with the, the drawing aspect. This is a very step-by-step -step class, so I don't expect um, anybody to have, you know, any pre, you know, preliminary drawing skills here. I'm going to make it very step by step and easy to follow um, for everyone. But there is uh, one thing that I will reference um, from another class and Raina is going to drop the, the the class that I'm referencing into the, the chat. It was the intro to graphite and drawing forms class, which was the very first class that uh, we ever had in this Artist Loft 101 series. And that is because I talked in that class about holding your pencil really lightly and holding it from the side. I talked about the differences between the H and the B pencils in that class. And so I'm not going to go over all of that now, but if you want more insight into why it's so important to, uh, you know, hold your pencil towards the back and uh, hold it at an angle to the paper. And if you're having issues with your pencil pressing down into the watercolor paper as we're drawing and having lines that are difficult to erase, then you might want to check out that class and that can really help you practice. Um, or if you want to grab some scratch paper or some uh, a sketch pad just to do some preliminary sketching of these these feathers with me before I get started on the, the final paper, that would be helpful as well. And then yeah, when we're done, we should have something that is very frameable. Um, that was I definitely had the holidays in mind whenever I created this class uh, for December because I thought, you know, makes a great gift having some some artwork and having a little triptych like this means that you could easily pop all three of these into three frames and have a nice gift to give someone or you could gift them to three different people. They don't have to be um, all together in a triptych or you can keep them for yourself and hang them in your guest bedroom or if they don't turn out amazing, you don't have to hang them on, hang them up. So don't feel too much pressure to have, you know, a perfect frameable product after saying all that. Um, okay, so uh, I've got one of my H pencils. It really doesn't matter which one, the 3H or the 4H or the 2H. And we're just going to begin sketching one of these feathers. Um, and if Reina if you don't mind, could you also drop the picture of the completed uh, triptych into the chat? I don't have my my completed one with me um, this time, but I will make sure I have it next week for part two. And also at the end of part two, we should have another one. So um, if there's kind of no way for me to get the feather in the frame as well uh, as my sketchbook. So I'm going to try, but you guys are going to have to just look at those lovely reference photos that I provided you with. Um, and yeah, if you wanted to do this from your own uh, feathers, if you had some feathers of your own and you didn't want to, you know, use my reference photos, obviously you can do that as well. Okay, so feathers have a couple of different important parts that we need to draw here. The um, We've got the, you know, the quill, and then we've got the actual little feather pieces, right? Um, the feathery part. Uh, and when we are drawing a feather, less is more. Using implied line is really important. So 
with your H pencil, we're just going to practice drawing this feather super lightly. Um, so I'm just going to draw the overall shape of it. And I'm going to draw it a little smaller than it actually is just to fit it onto the frame of my paper here. So we've got kind of a, a boat shape or like the oar of a boat or maybe the shape of a potato that's like really stretched out. Like let's just draw a very generic feather together and then break down, you know, what the, the best way to do this that will give us this effect that we're going for with this triptych. Because what I was going for with it was this kind of very loose, watercolory feeling, you know, very light and ethereal. So if we just draw this shape, let's just kind of go over like some pitfalls that we could fall into. So these are like the main lines, right? We've got the overall feather shape, the quill, and then down here, the like super roughly part. And that goes for this feather and that feather, but then the peacock feather is a whole different animal, um, literally. Uh, okay, so some things that I see students doing when drawing feathers that maybe would not add to the loose ethereal aspect of this, and that would be putting a hard line all the way around, like making this line super hard. That's not necessarily bad or wrong or, you know, going to like ruin our drawing or anything, but I'm going to try to stay away from that. So the way that I would avoid that is number one, to not draw that, that line very hard, dark at all. So we really just want that line to be there as a guide for where the, the edge of the <clears throat> colorful part of the feather is. Um, we also don't want that line to be too straight and uniform. I'm just going to flip to a new page here. So maybe in your practice sketching right now, just go ahead and like get all your like what not to do stuff out of your system and like just do it and then see the difference between doing the opposite. So the opposite of that would be to draw super lightly. So if we're holding our pencil to the, the back of the pencil and holding it on its side and we're using an H pencil, um, it's gonna be really hard to press down and end up with a line that's super hard. If you're using a B pencil, it's gonna be easier to have a harder line. Okay, but I want this line to be also uneven. I don't want it to be like a hard, a, you know, a uniform line. I don't want that to actually be a potato shape. I want it to have all these little indentions and grooves and it's more of like a, a wavy line, right? So notice all those places where it kind of dips and turns and some of the, the feather overlaps another part of the feather. So try not to make it too even and uniform. And then up here at the top, it's not uniform at all. It's more, all these little pieces are very separated. So we want this very jagged line. If you watch the class about drawing trees, sort of the same thing when I talk about drawing leaves as one mass of, with little keyholes in it. So rather than, I mean, you can do every little line that you're seeing up here if you want, but uh, I think it's better if we just do kind of the, the mass, the whole shape that we're seeing. Uh, the other way to approach this would be to look for the, the shadows and the, the highlight shapes. So the shapes of shadows and light that we're seeing throughout it. But this pattern is so busy that that would take a really long time to draw the whole feather that way. So I wanna give us a little bit of a shortcut, but maybe let's just pick out a few of these areas of organic shapes where it's a little lighter. Like right here, there's a big 
patch where it's a little lighter. And none of this has to be exactly the way that we're seeing it in the feather. We want it to feel, you know, natural and organic. We don't want it to feel forced um, unless, you know, you've got somebody standing over your shoulder saying, that doesn't look exactly like that feather. Like who really cares, right? As long as it looks like a feather with this pattern, I think we'll all be pretty satisfied. Okay, and then the last major component here is the, the quill, which turns dark brown and ends up as a thin line here at the top. So we definitely want to put that in a little, the, make the line a little heavier towards the top there. Yeah, I think it is a pheasant feather. I think you're right. So somebody said that in the chat. Okay, and then down here at the bottom, it gets really thick. So we'll get that nice thick line in there. But overall, we're looking for something sort of like this for, for this feather. And then it's really wispy here at the bottom, but we want all of this tuft to feel really light and airy right there. So same thing, like a mass of that. Okay, so that's our preliminary sketch for the the pheasant feather. And then the peacock feather, I'm just going to break that one down real quick. Um, it's the, the center of the feather is really where all the, the magic is happening, right? So let's break down these shapes that we're seeing. And again, this is, doesn't have to be perfect peacock feather if we get in the area of what a peacock feather looks like, it's going to hopefully satisfy us. Okay, so we've got this sort of Pac-Man shape here in the middle, right? It's totally a Pac-Man. So it's a Pac-Man turned sideways or a heart without a point at the bottom. And it goes in like that. And yeah, draw these lines as dark as you want them right now while we're, while we're sketching. Get it all out of your system because um, we want it to be as light and implied as possible on the, the final paper. And also we want to be able to erase our pencil lines. So we're going to go back over them with pen. And as I'm reminding myself of that, I'm going to definitively say we're not going to probably make it to the color tonight, but that's why we've got two parts to this class. Because yeah, we've got to add our pen work at the end here. And we want our pen work to be nice and implied. Um, so yeah, if you don't have your paintbrushes and cups and oil pastels, uh, I almost called them oil pastels, wax pastels prepared right now, we probably won't need any of that tonight. Okay, so we've got the Pac-Man shape, then we've got a nice square shaped sort of rounded square shape around that, then we've got a big rounded shape around that. And then we've got this action around that. This is that light green that sort of, sort of starts like this. And I'm drawing this really big right now. And then it breaks apart because all of this is made up of individual little feather wisps, right? So we need to get some diagonal lines coming through all of this. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So let's put the stalk down the center. It starts right in the center of our Pac-Man and it goes right down the point there. With that kind of heart shape. Okay, and then we can start to put all our diagonal lines. But again, we don't want to put, you could put one in like at every point, but that would start to feel a little too uniform. And it's all these little imperfections, these little moments where it gets broken up that really makes it feel realistically like a feather. So if we just pick out a few of those moments, like right there, or this little gap or space here, the little gap that happens every once in a while. 
where you can see the space in between those wisps, that's where it feels the most feather-like. And then you can, you know, fill all the rest of that in if you want. But this is just our preliminary sketch, but I just wanted to get the basic idea of all of that going. And we want to leave our values empty. So if we're putting any shapes of shadows or shapes of light in, we're not filling those in yet because we're going to be using our illustration pens to uh, outline everything, but we're not going to outline it in that hard outline all the way around it, right? We want a loose, ethereal, uh, implied line version of it. Reina, were you able to put the uh, the final example in the chat? I realize for those of you watching the recording later, you won't have access to the chat, but did we? Yes, I did. Okay, great. And if you're watching the recording later and you want to see a picture of the final product, you can go to, well, you can see it in the advertisement for the class, or you can go to my Instagram and it, it's there. And stay tuned for part two next week because we'll definitely have the finished version and I'll have my other one as well. Okay, so that's our preliminary sketch for the uh, peacock feather. And I'm going to do all this again very slowly on the final paper. I just wanted to make sure that we're getting a muscle memory going of all of these different shapes. Okay, so uh, when it, we talk about size, this one is not going to take up as much space on the paper, um, unless you want to make it just big as big as the other ones, but I'm going to draw it smaller on my my final paper as well. I'm going to start with the middle stalk on this one. And then again, just find that organic outer shape, but we want it nice and light. And if you start to hold your pencil more like this, like I just did, that's fine. But just be aware of the pressure that you're putting on your pencil. So if you're doing this on your practice paper and it's not making indentions in the paper, you're probably good, but that watercolor paper will retain a indention much easier. It's much easier to make an, a dent in that watercolor paper using an H pencil than it is on uh, sketch paper sometimes. Okay, and then we've got a lot of wispy tuft happening on this one. So the more patterned version of the feather is just about a third of it up here. And looks about like that. Okay, so that's our preliminary sketch. And that's about all we're really going to do with the pencil. Um, well, we'll do a little bit more with the pencil actually on the, the final paper. Any questions about just sketching and practicing the feathers so far? Uh, no questions about that. They're they're kind of wondering what that third feather is. It looks, from what I can tell, to be another pheasant feather. Yeah, actually, I think it is another feather. Plumage, a, a plumage one. Yeah, but I don't know if it's if they're real or not because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, might be synthetic. You know. Yeah. Still pretty. It is. Yes. Thank you. I was making these crowns for a um, art gallery this summer and needed and just wanted a bunch of feathers. I ended up not even using that many feathers on the crowns, but I still bought a whole package of those. And I was in the idea phase. The craft, anyway. the craft supply struggle is real. It really is. I know. I need these. <laughs> I don't know why, but I need them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so. Moving on to the final paper now. So I'm using my 5H, which is my lightest pencil in this set. And I'm just using very light pressure to begin to sketch that gestural shape. So I'm going to go almost to the bottom of this, this page and then almost to the top, just almost filling the page with this shape 
well this is the the stalk so almost going to the edge and i'm gonna have a slight curve with it and i'll go ahead and put the the thicker part uh in on the other side and then about halfway up i'm gonna let those two lines merge maybe a little more than halfway up So yeah, if you just follow along with me here, we're all going to have a nice feather triptych sketch at the end. The only issues that may arise are if you're pressing down harder with your pencil than I am. Okay, so we got that double line that merges about three fourths of the way up and becomes one line. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the little tufty business down here at the bottom. And I'm using a very jagged, irregular line. And I want to keep it just nice and loose, right? And then as I go up and fill in this shape, I'm looking at the, the feather a lot to see where I can include a few little dips and curves doesn't have to be perfect, but we want a few dips and curves and we want a line that is just a baby's breath on the page. And then up here, I can do either individual lines. I love how much there is in the chat about what kind of feathers these are. <laughs> I just keep glancing up and seeing more comments. I think I saw duck feather from someone there. Don't know. Okay, so got a little more texture up there at the top. It can be just like that one jagged mass shape or you can put some individual lines. Drawing this pattern is really what's gonna take up the most of our time here. And then Put a few more little jagged lines at the bottom and then we're going to fill in the rest of the shape with tuft. We want it to be a little more narrow as it tapers down towards the end of the, the quill. Okay, so now we want to put this pattern in and but first let's put in those value shapes like those spaces in between. There's a few moments where you can see the, the space in between. We we'll put a few of those in just for to give it some more character. We'll get this organic shape here that we talked about in the preliminary sketching. And then on this side, same thing. There's a little bit more of a wave happening on the right side to those, those gaps. But yeah, you don't need to put every little gap in there and you don't need it to be perfectly rendered like the one we're, we're seeing. We just want some imperfections, some inconsistencies to that uniformity so that it, it gives it some character. Okay. So we've got some people, when you're done, can you just hold it up a little closer to the, the camera so you can see the lines a little bit better? Yeah, definitely. All right. Nice. Lovely. Thank you. So you know if we, if we drew darker, it would, it would mess up with the watercolors, right? Um, it's not going to mess anything up. It's just maybe going to take away from the ethereal, light, loose, you know, feeling that we're we're going for here, or that gotcha. I was. For. Yeah. Um. And also, it'll be hard to erase your lines, and we're mm -hmm. going to go back over them with pen. So, drawing lightly is is key here. Okay. So I'm not going to do the entire pattern uh, in pencil because that feels redundant since we're going to go over it with the pen and the pen's going to take us so long, but I just want to get myself started here. Um, so 
I'm just going to put it in in pencil in detail here at the top and then maybe a little bit at the bottom and note where the pattern changes. But then we're going to do a lot of um, the detail here is going to be done with the pen. Okay, so the pattern is not uh, perfect. It's, you know, it breaks up a lot, but we basically want this diagonal stripe that alternates, you know, all the way down. On this side, it's a little wider, and on this side, the, the stripes are closer together. But ultimately, we've got what feels like diagonal stripes. Sort of like the pattern on Charlie Brown's t-shirt, right? It's like a pulse line or this jagged line that, that mirrors itself. So we're going to start to put that in up here at the top and just be mindful of how imperfect it is and how it, it doesn't go all the way across like Charlie Brown's t-shirt pattern. It's got some moments where it's just like hanging out like a couple of little circular bits of it are just hanging out by themselves. And then in a few other areas, you've got these little almost like pixels of brown squares that happen. And I'll hold that up close to the camera so you can see. So I'm kind of putting in a few of these little pixels, but you want to make sure that the whole pattern is, you know, following this this contour. So it's kind of going in an opposite direction of what the, the actual little feather wisps are doing. So if they're going in a diagonal line like this, we want the pattern to almost like cross hatch over them like this. I'm going to erase that, but you see what I mean. The wisps are going in a diagonal line out that way, and we want the pattern to cross hatch back over. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it kind of like that since we're going to be doing so much of that. And if you want to, you know, take your time and not join me with the pen and, you know, wait until you've sketched in every bit of that pattern in pencil, by all means, I just want to have time to move on. Okay, so the pattern goes all the way down and it basically just stops uh, short here where that light area is. So everywhere except for in the light area, we're gonna have that, that pattern. Okay, and then going the opposite direction or on the, the opposite side, it's the same thing, but it's just going in an opposite direction. So if the wisps are coming out in a diagonal this way, the pattern is crossing back over in a diagonal this way. So we're just gonna put that heart rate monitor jagged line in there. And then we wanna break it up with a few little pixelated moments cause it's not perfect. And we'll do that all the way down the side. I'm not going to sketch it all in pencil because it's going to take so long. So I'm going to set that one aside um, and come back to it and finish adding the pattern when we do the pen. So I'm going to go ahead and start drawing the peacock feather now on our second piece of watercolor paper. Okay, so I'm going to start with, actually, I'm going to start with the, uh, the quill because I'm afraid if I don't, I might make everything a little too big on the, the kind of center eye part there. So I'm just going to draw the double line, definitely not as thick as our pheasant feather quill. Yeah, I mean, not to brag or anything, but I haven't used my eraser once <laughs> in all of this, except for to erase the um, the cross hatching lines that I did there. So, you know, with the abilities that I have, 
I could just jump right in and do this in pen only. I don't even really need my pencil. But since I wanted this to be an all levels class, I'm just going to hold this up. I saw a little question in the chat. I'm not sure if it was to see this closer up again or not, but I'm just going to do it one more time. Um, you know, there's really no need for me to use a pencil for something like this. I could easily sketch in the loose sketchy thing uh, that I want to do with the pens on top of these pencil lines. Um, so, you know, if it feels a little redundant what we're doing here with the pencils, it's because it is, you know, these are the training wheels. Um, But I'm not saying I'm drawing it perfectly the first time. All The reason I'm not erasing is because any of the lines that I don't want to be there are so light that I can't even see them. So honestly, I wouldn't, even if I was doing this outside of this class, I would still use a pencil first. I just probably wouldn't put all of the details in. I would probably just do the like the basic shapes and then go ahead and jump to my my pen. But for the sake of step by step in this class, I'm putting a little more details in with the pencil than I would if I was, you know, doing this by myself in the studio. Okay, so I've got the Pac Man shape or the heart shape that doesn't have a point on the bottom. I've got the round shape around that, sort of a rounded square. Then I've got another rounded shape around that sort of a square rounded shape or it's actually it's more of a what what do you call that shape it's a little flat at the bottom and then rounded like a lily pad okay and then we've got the more pointed shape under that but peacock feathers are always doing different things outside. You know, if you look at a few different peacock feathers, sometimes the, uh, you know, the indigo part of it is more prominent or the turquoise part is more prominent or the green part is more prominent. You pretty much always see this same uh, palette of colors, like an indigo purple, a brown, a green, like a neon green and then that turquoise color, which is just so iridescent and gorgeous. But, you know, if you look at a few different peacock feathers, sometimes that the coloring can be a lot different, but this one has a lot of that green and a lot of brown. So the, the indigo is not quite as um, prominent as it can be on some peacock feathers. So if you have a peacock feather that you like better than this one, feel free to draw a different one. But yeah, some of these color patterns will subject to change. Not all peacock feathers are the same. All right, and then we'll put our imperfection lines in here. Some of these little gaps. And if you want to put every little diagonal line in there, you go ahead. Depending on if you're looking at the photo, um, I don't recall how I had it laid out when I, I took the photograph of it, but as it's just sitting here, several of these are kind of overlapping and going underneath. And I'm sure in the photo, some of that is happening. So maybe note where you're seeing that on the feather, like some of these maybe go under like that. So maybe have one or two of them doing that thing. You want a double line for all of these because there's definitely some texture going on. And if we get really close, you know, it's like each one of these is like its own little feather. So you could easily, you know, put the little wisps in on either side if you wanted to get really detailed and do something like that you could or you can just sketch in a double line like i said i'm going for ethereal and wispy 
if you're going for hyper detailed lots if you're going for maximalism then you can put all of them in there if you'd like okay and then up here at the top we've got more wispiness coming out of here and i'm going to kind of flick my pencil out and really let up on my pressure as i do this and when we get to adding the pen over this this will be helpful to practice this muscle memory. So really practice letting up on your pressure here and not letting this be a complete line. The more wispier, the better. There's a little bit of a gap here too in the coloring on these. So letting that line kind of stop and then start again. Good. And I'm really just filling in these diagonals where I'm seeing big gaps happening. I'm gonna wanna double line for all of these down here. Got a few missing. I'm going to go ahead and fill them in as if they're all there. Okay, and then to really help us when we get to the point where we're adding our color, I want to add a little bit more detail in here in the center. So um, because there's a large shift from black to that indigo purple to more of like a dull gray or like a matte black here. So I'm just going to outline the shape of that that color shift that I'm seeing. And it, it's a really irregular shape, but something like that, just to tell me that like right here is gonna be really black when we're adding our color. And you know, if you even wanna like do another one for like, here's the part that's really indigo purple, you know, be as detailed in there as you wanna be. Um, and then same thing with the brown area, there's one little moment where the brown almost shifts to purple right here at the edge, or it's almost like a greenish brown. It's really hard to match these colors exactly. We're going to do our best with our wax pastels, but you know, just having a shift in the color there will we'll add something for sure. So give yourself a little you know, visual note that there, there's going to be a, a color shift there so that when we start adding the color, you don't go into autopilot and just fill that all in blue, you know. Okay, and then our last feather. Oh, here, let me hold that one up close to the screen one more time. Okay, and then our last feather. My last piece of paper here. This one goes fast. So I'm going to kind of float this one in the middle of the page. If you want it to be kind of down in the bottom third, wherever you want to put it is fine with me, but just try not to put it too, you know, far up or too far down where it doesn't try to put it in either the the bottom third, starting in the bottom thirds, or right in the middle. I'm putting mine kind of right in the middle. So I'm starting with that curved line for the quill. It's a double line that tapers into one line pretty quickly. And then we've got all the tuft. maybe have a few little extra pieces of tuft like floating outside of it. So 
Um, if anybody's having trouble seeing the final product um, picture, it's on the advertisement for the class and it is also on my Instagram. And Rena said she dropped it in the chat as well. And I will definitely have it at the start of class next week. The trials and tribulations of having two studio spaces. I know you guys feel really sorry for me. Okay, so I've got a few little imperfections there in the tuft, and then there's this one squirrely part of the tuft that's like sticking way out over here by itself. We put that in there. And the tuft comes down really close to the end of the quill. And then we've got our pattern, which is very minimal. It's like a feather shape inside of a feather shape. Or like a tongue. I want a double line on that turquoise part that sticks out. And then right here, this is interesting and fun. So let's put this little moment in there where it kind of looks like a flame like little bits of fire popping off of a flame. And you could either draw the brown part or the turquoise part, you know, whichever part gets you there. If you want to focus on drawing the brown shape, it might be easier than focusing on drawing the turquoise shape. And then actually we do want a bit of a double line on the other side of the the center of the, the quill here because there's some turquoise on either side of that. So we want to make sure when we're adding color, we leave a gap so that we fill that space in with turquoise. Okay, and then we want some irregular irregularities in here. All right, and then again, all these little variations in color that we're seeing here, we want to make sure that we put those in with the wax pastels. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw the organic shape that I'm seeing where it's dark black inside of the tuft. And over here where it's kind of darker blue, just so that when we go to add the color, our brains perk up and we don't just fill this all in with with turquoise and blue that we spend some time you know we're also gonna do a really fun bleedy thing with the wax pastels treating them like watercolor which makes it it's just really fun i really enjoyed playing around with these okay 10 minutes to add pen if we don't finish adding the pen we'll do it in the next class Okay, so that is our, our sketches for the feathers. And then this one, the pheasant feather is going to take us the longest to fill in with pen because we've got that pattern. So if you're not super well versed uh, using your illustration pens, um, I've had a few classes where we've used these and I've taken the time to just like you know, do a little preliminary sketching with them and, and see, you know, how thick of a line you can make with, um, you know, with the point one and how thick of a line you can make with the point five, etc. I'm not going to do that for the sake of time this time, but I'm going to use my smallest nib pen, the point one, zero point one. And I'm going to look at the feather. I'm going to start with the heaviest areas first and work my way to the areas where it's the lightest. So if I were to put this, you know, take a photograph, well, you have a photograph, you should have a, a photograph of the, the feather. So if you were to invert the light on this feather and make all of the uh, black white and all of the white black and reverse the, the gray tones, where would it stand out as searing white? Like where does it get absolutely black? There's only a couple of places. It's in the center of the stalk. It's really just dark brown, but it feels really dark black. 
and then parts of the pattern. So we're going to start there. In case you are a little heavy handed with your pen and you're having trouble using light pressure because the pen will give you a heavier line or it will give you a thinner line depending on how much pressure you put on the pen. Or if the pen's running out of ink, sometimes using a pen that's running out of ink can be really helpful when you're trying to do light wispy things because it you know runs out of ink in a way that makes it look like you let up with your pressure. Okay, so I'm just going to dive in and start outlining some of this pattern because we've got a lot of pattern to fill in here. And I'm not going to color it in because we've got our brown wax pastel for that. And I don't even necessarily need to do a hard outline around the whole thing because that brown with the wax pastel will fill it all in. We really just want this like, yeah, ethereal, wispy, if I haven't overused those words too much, I'm going to use them again. We want this broken line. So we don't want it to be a hard edge with the pen, unless you do because you're not me. I don't want it to be like that. I want mine to be wispy and ethereal. But if you want yours to be more, you know, hard edged or crisp or, you know, a little more cartoon like or graphic, then, you know, you can press down as hard as you want and outline everything as, as hard as you want. But I'm going to try to use this wispy technique all the way down. And I'm really not going to outline, I'm not outlining the outer line. That whole line that we did was just to let us know where the pattern needs to end. I'm going to leave it really implied. I'm going to erase all of these pencil lines. And when we're done, we want it to kind of load out and do this wispy watercolor thing. So as long as your pattern is, you know, alternating and following the same path, it doesn't have to be exactly like the feather. You can really kind of go into autopilot here, sketching the pattern in. All right, we got five minutes left and I wanted to make sure I was adding a little bit of pen to all of the feathers because next week it looks like we're going to have to finish the pen work at the start of next week's class, but we have plenty of time to do all this, but I'm going to go ahead and skip to the, um, I mean, you're going to just do, it's going to be very monotonous, monotonous. You're going to do that same thing all the way down the feather. Um, when it comes to the tuft, like try to make it as loose and you don't even have to outline all of the tuft if you just want to do like a tiny bit like that. You know, just really broken up something like that would be good. Unless you really like the way a hard line around it around it looks, or if the hard line is just happening, then embrace it, but try to go for as loose and wispy as you can. There, very little pressure. Practice on a spare sheet of paper doing loose, wispy lines with your pen. And then same thing here. I'm just going to outline where it's the darkest first. And then really just bounce around and outline everything as wispy as possible. I think the more you you bounce around, it's easier to be light and loose with the lines and more implied. Like if you 
stay in one area too long, you start to start pushing down with your pressure. But if you bounce around, it should be pretty easy to keep it light and loose. You know, and note all the places where the feather doesn't have a hard edge around it. You know, there, there's no hard edge at the end of the feather. There's just, you know, the closer in you get, there's more wispiness. So the more light and airy you can make those pen lines. You know, maybe just right here where it gets super dark black could be the one spot where you press down a little more evenly or maybe you know everywhere where you want it to come across really dark we definitely do want a few moments for it to be darker like here on either side of the the stalk because we want some contrast so start in those moments where it's heavier and then let up with your pressure as you go around but I mean come on doesn't that look nice with the the lightness of it and I know it takes a lot of practice to like really nail that it's like I always like to say you know in high school where you spend three hours trying to look like you put five minutes into your outfit like you didn't think about it at all that's what you're going for here you're taking all this effort to make it look like whatever it's just a wispy line okay and then let's do get started on our pen on this one this one's you could even use your heavier nibbed pen because it's it's darker so i'm going to switch to my 0.5 so if you find yourself being really heavy-handed maybe start with the pen on this one Well, this one I can have more of a, a dark heavy line because it does get that dark. I can outline all the places where it's going to be black and with a darker line. I'm going to switch back to the point one for a lot of these lines though. Okay, well, it is seven o'clock, guys. We have reached the end of the class. Um, I am doing an Instagram live q and I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the class, but if anybody has any lingering questions or anything about the technique that I'm using with uh, the pen or the pencils tonight, I'm going to hop on Instagram live for q and A. if you want to join me for 30 minutes. I'll start that in... Uh, just a few minutes and uh, next week's class will be part two and we'll finish the pen we'll practice our palette and then we'll we'll fill in these feathers and yeah the part where we actually put in the color is going to go really fast so I think we will we're making good time with all of these um if we have just one minute, Raina, if you don't mind going over can we spotlight a few people and see how these are coming along Anybody want to hold theirs up and show us how they're they're looking so far? Oh, nice peacock feather, Barbara. Oh, look at that. Very nice, Annette. Ooh, I love it. That pattern's really coming along, Arthur. Awesome, Jennifer. Yeah, and I love, my favorite thing about doing something like this is how we're all going to put our own unique spin and touch on all of these. Ooh, that's gorgeous. Alejandra, I love it. Oh, and your cat's making a cameo there. Oh, we've already started adding some color there. Oh, that's looking really nice. 
So much line variety. Ooh, I love how you just did the pattern and didn't do the edge of the feather at all, or those pencil lines are so light, I can't see it. Oh, that's looking great. All right, cool. Oh, I'm so excited about these. Well, if you want to post your progress on them so far onto um, uh, Instagram or anything and uh, tag make it with Michael's or Michael's classes or tag me so that I see your your progress tonight. That'd be great. Or if you want to wait until they're done next week, but I'm excited to finish these. Um, thank you all so much and I'll, I'll see you next time.